Good morning. Or not a good morning for me. I don't know what I've got going on in here now. I have got fish clamped. Sitting in the corner. Look. That show over there just wafting around. Veiny fish. Jumping fish. Basically, they're not happy at all. I don't know what is what's happened this last couple of days. They've gone absolutely mental. So I'm going to get a few out for a scrape now. I'm thinking maybe some kind of bacterial issue from maybe where the pump's been off from the K1 chamber. And I don't know. But they are not happy one bit. Um, so I'm going to get a handful of scrapes in now. I haven't got anything like chloramine tea or virus or anything like that, so I'm going to have to make a trip out in a bit if needed. Um, unless it is something else, I don't know. Well, hopefully we'll find out on the scrapes now. But I'm going to come up now. I don't know how well that's coming out, but every fish is veiny. Look at the shiro. And that little kahaku looks like an absolute mess. That shower has just been sitting there all morning. Just clamped up on the bottom. And look, there's one in the corner down there and the chag. So I, I need to get a move on with this. There's obviously something serious here. Right. It doesn't rain, it pours, doesn't it? Let's crack on. Look at that fish. Is it even alive? What the? Some kind of major issue here. Look at it. Right, fish is alive. I put the net near it and it just sort of didn't do a lot until I put it up here. This is a bit vain as well. Yeah, so I don't... Anyway, well I'll get a scrape of this one definitely first. It's definitely not happy. Not happy at all. First scrape done. After 20 minutes, nothing. Um, so I'll get another one. Uh, yeah, I'll get another one. I'll just keep going. I'll do, I don't know, three or four. But not good not to spot anything and for it to be just sitting there doing zero, looking dead. Now, I've just found some virus here, actually, so if I can't find any parasites, I am going to go down the virus shore route, which I used to add. I was adding the back end of last year, but then stopped when winter came. So, anyway, next fish, next victim. This one was clamped up a minute ago on the bottom as well. This one's quite veiny. Very veiny, in fact. Right, anyway, I'll flip it over and have a look underside, get a scrape, have a look. Nothing on that. So next up, I don't know, probably that super veiny kahaku there. Right. This fish is not happy at all. Look. Look at the state of it. Look at it. It's a bit of a mark there, maybe from flashing. It don't feel too good either. It's just unbelievable. Fuck's sake, right. Let's go with this one. Nothing else on that scrape, so I'm going to give up on scrapes, just do some water tests. So, I'm flummoxed really, it's obviously something to do with the water, rather than the fish. So, 
I don't know really, I don't know whether to go to mine tea or the Volta Shore. Which is here. Um, yeah. I'm swimming around now with the air off. Couldn't it be too much air? So, um, last day-ish, maybe a little bit more, the fish have not been happy at all. So the lingering shower that I had, where it was just tail down, head up, I had three or four doing that, a few clamped up. When you come over to the pond, they were then swimming away and coming up and, you know, looking for a bit of food. But like, uh, when I come down this morning, there was about four or five just clamped up on the floor, a couple also just toweled down, head up. Messy. Uh, the gosh gear's an absolute bloody falling apart. So I don't know what is going on. I did water tests, nothing. I checked me chloramine, chloramine, whatever it is, with my DPD tablets, nothing from the purifier. Check the pond water as well, nothing. The only thing that there is is slightly raised nitrite. Um, but not like majorly concerned because it's the start of the end. I've hardly had any food. Dog! Sorry. I've hardly had, I've had no food, hardly at all going in this year. A little sprinkle every day for about two weeks and then I stopped. So I'm, I'm thinking it's got to be some kind of bacterial issue from restarting because it only, all seems to stem from restarting the K1 vortex up. It was all blocked up with. Um, Micro K1, which I showed from last week. So, I don't know. That's why I'm just thinking bacterial. Scrapes showed nothing. I carried on scraping a couple more fish, nothing. Um, to the point of giving myself headaches staring down the microscope for a few hours. But I just do not know. I'll be honest, since the PP's gone in, look, they're all swimming around a lot more. A lot more freely now. So yeah, that's what I've done. I've put a dose of PP in, try and lower the bacteria count. I haven't got any CT. Um, I did have some virus, sure. But you know, I, I just needed to act sort of fast and, and get something done because they're just not happy at all. I mean, I, the last 24 hours I've had the trickle turned right up. Um, and again, they're just just odd. I have sort of lost as to what could actually be the problem here. So, hence just knocking it with PP. And if there is a parasite that I've missed, the PP should hopefully knock it back a bit. I, I can't see that I've missed a parasite. Jeez, I've, I've scraped enough fish in my time. And I've had every parasite, so I sort of, you know, like to think I sort of know what I'm looking for. So, the PP is purely just to knock back any kind of bacteria in the pond. So it's been in now about oops, it's on, it's off for it's been in 40 minutes. Uh, everyone's as I say, everyone's actually swimming around better now than they were before the PP went in. So we'll see. Uh, so just keeping an eye on them really, and then um, hopefully we'll um, be getting somewhere. But I won't know till tomorrow, probably the day after, when the well, the PP will be spent in a bit, won't it? Three more hours. And then um, just let the fish settle down and the water recover a bit and see where it's at. But I haven't got a clue. As I say, the only thing I can put it down to is some kind of bad bacteria from starting up the, the K1 chamber. I can't. The only thing that I've changed is turn the UV on, because that's been unplugged for a bit, and turn the K1 chamber on. It can't be the UV, can it? Because that's not even in the pond, that's in the drum. So it must be something to do with that stagnant, crappy water in there. But I don't know. But as I say, I, I can't believe parasites either, because I haven't spotted any on the any of the scrapes that I've done. Really, really, really weird. Well, so just keep an eye on them. And hopefully, not that you can see a lot. As I say, they're all swimming around now, which they weren't doing. 
so worth doing. And yesterday, actually, as well, I had a few jumping. I was out in the garden doing a few bits. And we had a barbecue yesterday, late on, and there was a few jumping and splashing quite heavily in the pond, which they don't do. Obviously, you get to know your fish over time, and I know for a couple of things. When I turn the air off, the big chag always flashes against the drain when the air's off. My fish never jump, so, you know, I, I know that's a, not a normal behaviour. So, just something is wrong somewhere with the water or something. So, hopefully this will just knock back wherever we're at and everyone gets a bit better. But, anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm not in a happy place at the minute. And yesterday I did have a, a mini meltdown to the wife about the whole thing talking about caving it in because it's just issue after issue after issue and it's just getting right on my tits if I'm honest but hey I'm not going to do that it was just a moment of I, I couldn't believe that something else was going wrong when all the issues that I have had last year but whether or not this, any of this stemmed from any of that who knows anyway Hello, sorry about the cycling videos, but you know, I had, I did say I was working up to going on a big ride, and I had to video going up Michael Gate in Lincoln. It's quite a steep, cobbled hill. Um, so it's quite important for me, so apologies. And the koi video got delayed. Anyway, koi stuff. So the Goshki. Unfortunately, after my absolute meltdown, I'm not sure how much of my meltdown I'm going to put in this video. Um, I've not sorted through the clips yet, but I'll probably be able to tell I had a complete meltdown about it. Um, and I had a complete panic about what to do with the pond, the fish and everything. Um, so what happened to it? After PP in the pond, um, after that cleared, I turned the trickle right up and it just was not happy at all everyone else was a bit moody after it was like any kind of treatment they were just sort of mooching around and you know just getting on with life as opposed to being all excited because it was, it was quite warm um, I did speak to Paula Reynolds from Lynx Fish Health and she seemed to think that possibly two kind of issues going on here one the fish just not happy with the temperature swings that we were getting because obviously it was hot, boiling hot one day then it was cold the next day, then it would be boiling hot again then it would be boiling hot for a couple of days, then it would be cold again so just the swings in the temperature, just the fish were not happy it was causing a bit of stress and you know hence them looking like they wanted to die because they just didn't know what was going on um, and it just, I think that just all pushed the goshki over the edge plus then it had a nick and they obviously had a very slight bacterial issue probably from restarting the K1 filter. In hindsight, I should have dumped the water that was in there first rather than turning it on and probably introduced some um, poorish bacteria to the, to the water and then um, obviously opportunity to cold with the goshki and it just was not happy at all. Um, from what went looking a lot better, it then went rapidly worse. Outside the wind was horrible, red, angry, and just cruddy and it probably lost about 25 30 scales in the end and it just was not it wasn't it stopped feeding it was just always grumpy it was always just floating around the bottom of the pond not really you know when it did come up it was sort of wafting at the top of the water it just you know it just wasn't happy you know they're not happy and then i wasn't sure what to do with it i wasn't sure whether to give it some salt baths um i just wanted to leave it alone for a few days because it was topically treating every couple of days the wound but then, lo and behold, unfortunately, it, it had the very start of dropsy. All of the, the scales were starting a pine cone. Um, it just always covered in mucus. I couldn't ever find anything on it. it but obviously, the, the wound then let the bad bacteria in. It just had some kind of internal bacterial issue. So, unfortunately, I had to put it out of its misery. So, Goshki is now gone. Another one gone. Um, but I'm pleased to report since then everybody else is mega happy and um, the temperature settled down now to being just really warm hot and lovely and everyone's on it now um, I have got or well, I did have I haven't checked for a few days a very slight nitrite reading um, obviously that probably didn't help either 
because the filters were just starting to kick in. Plus, then it had treatment, a few treatments back to back kind of thing. Um, but as I say, now everyone that is in it is happy. Thank the Lord. Um, hence, wanting to add the heater. If I can just maintain a stable temperature, I think that's the key here. It's just keeping everything stable. So water readings, temperature, food, you know, anything sort of untoward stress-wise. It just can send them over the edge, can't it? So that is the big thing for this year is to try and get the heater sorted and plumbed in or purchased, then plumbed in. Not so I can heat massive temperatures, but just to keep the temperatures around about the ambient temperature. And if there are a few days of it being a bit chilly, you know, I can maintain the heat or slowly drop it down rather than the major changes that we've had. Um, but there we go. You live and learn just another one of those things. I don't think I could have done anything to save it. I think it had just sort of given up near the end anyway, with the possibility of the bacterial issue. So that just pushed it over the edge. So anyway, so as I say, they're all, there's no flicking, there's no flashing, there's no more sulking. The Kahar, the smaller Kahaku there's still a little bit veiny, but is probably on a scale of 1 to 10 and 10 being where it was, it's probably now a 2 or a 3 veiny wise and there's a slight knock just behind its gill plate there which have just been putting a bit of tamadine on it but compared to where they were, I mean, in a massively better place now. You know, they're all coming up for some food, which they weren't doing. I know the, the weather was a bit cold. And the water temperature now is probably 16 degrees. Yeah, 16 degrees, so I'm sort of hovering around the 15, 16 degrees now. Not that we've really had any cold stuff. And the next couple of days are due to be a bit a bit fresh, but I don't expect to go down two or three degrees a day, maybe one, possibly two degrees, but you know, it'll be over a bit of a longer period than, than it was, and it was quite, quite a sharp change quite often. Anyway, so I'm feeling a bit better about myself at the minute after the absolute meltdown. Um, I want to get all these little niggly jobs done. Now I'm to cycle things done. Lots of niggly little jobs that I want to get sorted. Finish off the field pit. Um, sort, order some bits to get my skimmer sorted, which I said I was going to do, which I haven't sorted yet. And this weekend coming, oh, we are as a club going to Adam Byers. So we're having, well I'm having a couple of fish from him, we're doing a club growing show, so it's going to be Kahaku's, um, so that'll be interesting. Um, he's producing some really good fish at the minute, so, well he hasn't been to him for a long time, but some of the fish I've seen pictures of are absolutely amazing. I mean for the price as well, it's an absolute steal really. Um, so I'm going to capture a lot of that on video as well. That'll probably make up next week, if not the week after. It depends how much video I get, because it takes a while to edit and put it together. Um, and that's it, really. Just hopefully now the weather and the sun is here, everything's a little easier. I mean, they're, they're late 24/7 at the minute, so um, but I am just feeding, still just feeding wheat jam uh, three times a day, once in the morning when I get in from work, and then in the evening probably about 30, 40 grams, something like that. Not a lot. I've not measured it. Um, I do need to check the water parameters. As I say, my nitrite was spiking a little bit, but I'm not overly concerned because I know the filter got the filter's got the knockback, didn't they? So, but hopefully now that's it. We can start to um, enjoy a few more better days of fish keeping rather than the monstrosity that I've been having these last few months. But there we go. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next week. Hopefully, I'll get the video done. If not, week after. See you later. Bye-bye.